Have you ever found yourself saying, I wasn't raised this way. How in the world did my life get, where did my daughter get this kind of crazy thinking, this stinking thinking? I didn't teach that to my son. Have you ever had your seed corrupted and you discover that there was tears sown among something and you didn't teach them that? An enemy hath done this while men slept, while we were unaware, while we were unawake. It it, it is amazing that he came in and sowed seed, tares. Tares look just like wheat. The only way that you can tell a, a, a a tare from the wheat is when you pull them, you throw them up in the air, And the wind will blow the tares away and the wheat falls to the ground because the wheat has weight to it. It has substance to it. The other has the appearance of it. You can't even tell the difference on the outside. I understand. I didn't even understand this until I was in the zoo down in Louisiana. I was in Louisiana, went to the zoo. And and I saw for the first time what was called a hairless sheep, but it was a goat. I mean, you know, they, they, they had something, it, it was called a hairless sheep. The hairless sheep was identical to the goat. I mean, I'm looking at it. His head looked just like a goat. That, I understand now why you need the, 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 the God, the Holy Spirit is going to have to separate the sheep from the goat. Their heads are identical. I never knew that until I'm looking at a goat and a hairless sheep and I can't tell them apart. They look identical. It is the same as the wheat and the tare. And he says, don't try to separate them while they're young because they look too much alike. And here's the deal. He says, if you try to separate them, the reason that he told them, don't separate them, is because the roots of the tare go down and entangle themselves around the roots of the wheat. And if you're trying to rip the root of the, of the tare out, you're going to uproot some of the the wheat. And so he says, I want the productive part. So don't even risk it because, you know, I mean, most militaries of the earth, they realize that there are certain casualties of war and they don't even mind that certain civilians may be killed in the process of war. It is a casualty of war, but God loves everybody and he doesn't want any casualties. And so he says, don't you try to uproot these because if you call yourself trying to root out the tare from the wheat, you're going to end up rooting out some of my productive wheat plants and I don't want you to do that. Let them grow up together. Then you'll be able to see what you got. And then there will come a proper time to be able to harvest it. And when you throw it up, then he says, I'll let my wind be the thing that will discern the difference because the one that is the tear will be hollow on the inside and it'll blow away with the wind. But the one that is the wheat will have substance and will come back to the ground. And that's why every now and then you need a storm to blow in your life. And most of the time we have storms, we want, we're wondering, God, I mean, what are you doing here in this storm? Why are you sending this here to test me? Uh, why why are, 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 you, are you doing this to see, are you trying to test me, God, to see whether I can, can trust you? No, 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 God's trying to see whether he can trust you. Maybe, have you ever thought about the fact that when storms come your way, that when circumstances come your way, that when situations come your way, God is sending the storm to see, can I depend on Betty? Will Helen still be faithful to me? You know, he he wants to know, will Dorothy still trust me? Will Michael still be able to kneel in prayer and thanksgiving? Can he still worship me if they lose this? Will, will Will they still be faithful to me? Uh, can, can, can I depend on you, Paul, that if, if I give you a thorn in your flesh and if I don't take it away, I know you prayed three times and asked God to take it away, but he said, my grace, because I want to see what you're doing, Paul. God is saying, I'm looking to see not whether you can trust me, but whether I can trust you. I want to see whether you are predictable, that if you put them in a hard place, that they won't curse me and die. I, he said, I got to test you to see whether I can depend on you. 
whether I can send money your way and let you not get so puffed up in pride that you become arrogant and then go the way of secular people in the world. Could I ever trust you to be able to go on tour with Beyonce without losing your salvation? Can I, can I trust you with money? Can I trust you with vision? Can I trust you with a platform that is bigger than where you are? Are you predictable? He said, have you ever considered my servant Job? Because he is a faithful man that has walked perfectly before me and he eschews evil. And if you take everything that he's got, I know he's predictable. He still won't curse me. He may cry. He may get frustrated. He may say, I don't understand this. But you will never get Job to be able to curse me. God is saying, I'm testing you to see whether I can trust you for the next level. Am I talking to anybody in this house? Because Satan wants to sift you like wheat. Sifting is about taking all of the good stuff out of you. But God wants to shake you. Shaking rids you of the bad, but sifting takes the good out of you. You sift wheat so you can get the good wheat. The devil wants to sift you. Jesus said, Peter, Satan has desired to sift you. He wants to have you. He wants to take the good stuff out of your life. But the devil is a liar. He's a liar. He's a liar. He's a liar. You ought to be able to say with your action, God, I am dependable. I'm dependable. I am predictable. I don't care what happens to me. I'm going to praise you because you were worthy before I had this stuff. And you'll be worthy if I lose it. Naked came I into the world. Naked am I going to go out of this world. Bless it. Bless it. Bless it. Bless it. Be the name. Bless it. Bless it. Bless it. Be the name. Bless, bless, bless. Be the name of the Lord.